Luca Nation, you guys have had yourselves a ton, a ton, a ton of awesome content conversations in the last few weeks. So today's episode is going to be Cage and I. We really haven't spoke much in the last 12, 24 hours. It's moving week for me to Florida, so I'm already a little bit on edge. So you're going to get that side of Andrew. Cage, and Cage is, brings it every day. It's You can't even throw them off. So we want to welcome you guys back to Lucas Tigers and Bronzo Mai. This will be conversational. We'll talk about probably a variety of topics. We'll be disorganized, all that stuff. If you want a more organized episode, we have an awesome 10 for 10. If you're just joining us, if you haven't listened to go listen to that. Jason Coons yesterday. That was we got the most comments on that episode, and people loved it. It was a little bit longer, uh, but they loved my the phone story. died. <laughs> I felt really bad at the end. My phone died at the end, and I charged the whole thing. It's a long episode. A long episode. If you happen to run while you know while listening to us, you know expect a longer run <laughs> from that one. You know it is one of those things. Well, listen. I mean, you start us off by saying basically this episode is going to be a hot mess. I mean, if you want, if, so. if you want an organized episode, go go listen to one of our six hundred and forty something other ones. Let's start before I mean, get on a hot mess. Jackie Robinson Day. Yeah, right? there you go. So I was gonna just say that hundred percent. Yeah, man. I mean, we got a bunch of topics. We got that. Let's start about. Let's talk about that. When I'm feeling um, a certain kind of way, I always remember just just keep learning, right? Keep learning, keep growing, keep improving. And I think there's only so much you could learn online. Right. Online is its own world where people sit in their boxer shorts at home, <laughs> put anything they want on the Internet with no repercussions. But where you really learn is you go to shows, you meet people. And something interesting at the last show in Atlanta that was talked about is how they still teach. And not only do they still teach, they've ramped up the teaching on Jackie Robinson in schools. So the next generation of kids growing up, they're going to know this guy. You know how we talk about like cardboard irrelevant versus cardboard relevant? Like who talks about Carl Malone, for example? Mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. I apologize to bring him up. If you take Jackie Robinson, this guy is in the curriculum of the schools. This guy is going to be talked about for the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 50 years. Yeah, longer. Longer. You know, you know movies made about him, you know, all kinds of stuff, right? And uh, um, What do you know about him? I know he was out at least one time when he stole home. I know one of those 19 steals was actually he did not get to home plate safe. I'll tell you that much. So if there was a video review, they would have taken seven and oh, a half forget minutes. About it. And you, there was home. video of it. You, he was out. You watch it. Yogi Berra went crazy. You watch Yogi, the games? Yogi Ter- Yogi Ter- I wasn't alive. It was like 55 maybe, 55 and 56. That, you know, was, you know he, he, they, they won, he won one World Series. One Series he won. Won MVP, you won one series. Um, you know, they beat the Yankees, I think. Are you a little better because he's like a crosstown rival? Why are you not a Brooklyn fan? Why are you not a Jackie fan? Why are you a Yanks fan? You, you know, my dad was a, a Brooklyn Dodgers fan, and I think a lot of the um, the angst about the Dodgers leaving is part of the reason that I'm a Yankee fan. You know, that kind of carried over, you know, to, to me um, as a kid. You know, he rooted for the Brooklyn Dodgers. And not Jackie Robinson or, you know, Roy Campanella. You know, he was a Duke Snyder fan, a Duke Flatbush. Um, he was a Carl Farillo fan. You know, he, he went to, like, you know, those nights. Uh, I went to Carl Farillo night, you know. Um, and uh, so he was a Brooklyn Dodgers fan. But then he, the Dodgers he left. not any of those guys. Our they, audience well, I mean, maybe guys. not. But Duke Snyder you can look up. That's a home run masher, Duke Snyder. Um, you know, he was awesome, the, the Duke of Flatbush. Um, Ferrillo, probably not so much. You know, that would be like the Duke you know, of Flatbush, right? Yeah. You, you just said that, yep. The Duke of Flatbush, just make sure I heard it right. Is that no good? Duke of Flatbush, yeah, it's, it's out, it sounds perfect to me. I mean, I mean, that might be my fantasy football name, actually. I, I sure. think you could probably make like a porno name out of it, I'm sure, is probably where you're the going. Duke, but, the Duke of Flatbush, yeah. So, but yes, Duke Snyder is actually, a, I think his name was Edwin. I think um, Edwin Snyder, but they call him Duke. Um, I think don't if I'm wrong, don't don't come at me too crazy. I mean, you know these guys played in you know 70 years ago. It's even before my time, guys. Um, so yeah, so give me a pass if 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 you can if I got his name wrong. But I think I might be right on his name. Um, and I think when they left, they went out to California. Um, you know, my father, you know, was like, all right, well, the Dodgers are gone. You know, I mean, that's a deal. And they brought the Mets. You know, the Mets came 
that Mets were supposed to be like replacing the Dodgers. That was the New York National League team. As a matter why of did, fact, why did they move to LA? Why did the Brooklyn Dodgers? Well, they go expanded to LA? baseball out there. There weren't a lot of teams out west. They moved baseball out there. You know, the Giants were a New York team too. New York baseball Giants. That was a new yeah. Well, Willie Mays played for the Giants. I'm pretty sure he was playing for a New York Giants team. Were there, was there a stadium in Central Park? Uh, I don't think Central Park. I think they play. You know, they played it at Ebbets Field. I think the Dodgers. I am the wrong person for this, guys. I could research it. Um, you know, this is like my dad's kind of time. You know, for for this. Um, but you know, Yankee Stadium, Ebbets Field, the Polo Grounds they played in. Um, and then when the Mets came, the Mets were like a follow up to the Dodgers so much so that um. You know, the new Mets Stadium, City Field, is almost like an ode to the Dodgers, which is very weird. You know, like the Dodgers have Dodger stuff, but like, you know, the entrance way of City Field is called the Jackie Robinson Rotunda. You know, you walk in, it's like a bunch of Jackie Robinson stuff. And, you know, if you're a Met fan and the Dodgers are better than you, you know, you don't realize that the Dodgers were, you know, were a New York team and, you know, that kind of stuff. It is a little awkward. Like, the the name is the same, location is different. So, like, did. What are they fans of, right? Are they fans of the Dodgers? So now people who grew up watching the – I mean, who, who really grew up watching the Brooklyn Dodgers, they become Dodgers fans or they become the, the Met fans? Yeah. I mean, Sandy Koufax is a Brooklyn Dodger and then an L.A. Dodger. You know, I mean, these guys, they – you know, they, they went with the team, right? So yeah, – Such an upgrade, man. That's such <laughs> an upgrade. I hope they got like a relocation bonus too. I mean, it depends. It depends. California today probably a little different than California then, but yeah, weather wise, I'm sure it's 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 an upgrade. Um, if Brooklyn's you're a pro pretty, athlete, you want to live in Cali. It doesn't. I mean, matter. listen, I was born in Brooklyn, so I, you'll never get me to, to say anything's an upgrade from Brooklyn. I so, don't know why pro athletes go to New York. If I could be honest, I, like, I mean, that's not really where you want to live as a pro. You can live anywhere in the world. You want to live in New York? I mean, they don't necessarily have to live there. I mean, they're pro athletes. They can live wherever they want. You know, the off season for most sports is longer than the regular season. They can live somewhere else. You know, these guys Not make soccer. enough money. Not soccer. Yeah. We work year round. Soccer's interesting. We're going to be doing some fun soccer and whatnot. By the time you listen to this episode, we've already done it. But I'm breaking some soccer. <laughs> our, our team, you know, we had them do a little post for us. And they're like, tell me who the rookies are. And I'm like, the thing I'm looking forward to the most about breaking the soccer box is saying the names poorly. I think people will get a kick out of it because I don't know these guys. I don't, I don't know anything. I don't know any of the players. But I'm just going to read their names poorly, and they're like, who's the rookies? I'm like, get out of here. What, 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 what do I know? Who's the rookies? Uh, who's the rookies? Let's see. Uh, Roberto Baggio. I don't know who the, who the rookies are. What do you guys here? I don't know, soccer. So, yeah, Jack Robinson Day. Some really cool uh, memorabilia, golden, you know, um, and and go even further. PWCC this weekend. Take a look at some of the cool cards they have in there. Forty-seven Bond bread, just like a really sick card. Um, there's a couple really of tough, forty-eight leaves. Really tough on the condition, right? Because it was yeah. it was in a it was like sold at grocery stores in a yeah carton or a bag of bread, so it and, got banged around. Yeah, the one they have is the coolest one. It's the you know just like the portrait one with the facsimile autograph on it. It's you know they really off centered too, not just the condition one. They're really off centered. You don't see them in 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 really nice grades. It's a really nice copy that they have. Um, so what's top of mind? We, we well, haven't lots done of stuff. An you ready? So I want I'm going to hit you on the I've, spot. I'm surprised more people haven't. I just I just want two names. I have a big mouth and a big head. One Love. question. Next question. Is it going to be Cavs or Hawks? Go. Hawks. Is it going to be um, Pelicans or Clippers? Pelicans. Okay, now why? Hawks are kind of rolling right now. They kind of figured out their rotations. I'm, I'm not a big believer in this team, but they kind of play the outscore game. And when they're on, they're on, right? Like I think last game they had six guys with like 13 points or more. Uh, Trey's going to get his 30. It's it's the surrounding cast, and I think they figured out. I think they put um, Gallinari into the starting lineup, and that's kind of mixed things up a little bit as well with Collins out. Uh, I also think it's how you trend up or trend down. I don't like the Levert trade for the Cavs. I don't like him as a player. He kind of he kind of messes things up. I, I, he's, he's not bad. He's an NBA player, but he's not my style, and he kind of messed that team up. If you look at the record before and after Levert, they've had injuries. It's not all his fault, but he kind of clogs up the lane. Uh, so that's that, that's where I go with that. One team's trending up the Hawks, one team's trending down. 
uh, the Cavs. And it was a cool episode, I think, Jay Lee and Probstein. Probstein was saying how tray cards are the hardest cards to sell on eBay. Constantly shilled. So, uh, I mean, Lameem's been putting us onto that for a while, but kind of interesting. Tray cards are the most shilled cards on eBay. And there's nothing you could do. They've been trying to, like, track IP addresses and stuff. Pelicans? Why do you think that is? I don't know, man. I have no clue. I don't understand how shilling works. I really don't. Um, in the sense, like, okay, I understand it's bidding up a card, but what if that card's paid for? You know, is that still a show bid? I mean, it's that's yes. pretty easy to do. It is, but then it's like, who's who's doing that? Is it people who own tray cards and they don't want to see them fall and really set a market? Yes. Are, you are sound you like answering? you un- you sound like you understand shilling pretty good. <laughs> you sound like you sound, sound like you got a good handle on it. That's what it is. It's people who have a bunch of tray stuff. They don't want to let tray cards end at what the actual ending price would be. Okay, but but then there was like the V Friends box, uh, which was now looking back more than likely shilled. Who's shilling it? Is it Zero Cool? Is it Gary? Is it early buyers of the box who want the box price to go up? Yes. <laughs> you're having fun. I am, but you're you're making it easy because you're right. Everything you're saying is right. I'm not trying to be a dick by saying yes. It could be any of those. I don't know in, 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 in an individual auction who's doing it. But what you've seen is that when things sell and they sell for a known price and that known price is publicized, the price of something goes up. It doesn't necessarily have to be shilled. Look at what happened with Flawless now, right? Because everybody was after it to try to get boxes for Drake, right? So now what if you are – so so – Take it to the but many that's different, pumped, right? Because nah, that's like no, more that's, marketing. But, ta- but listen, but take it to the next level, right? Take it to the next ethical levels. There's many little. You know, it was Ghostbusters two, uh, a movie that probably shouldn't have been made, um, where Bill Murray explains to Sigourney Weaver the many subtle levels of laundry. There's not just clean and dirty. There's just many subtle levels of clean in between. Like that's probably win- a better. That's probably a better way to word what I was saying. In the sense, I understand it on the surface, but I don't understand the mechanics of it. Well, think about this for a second, right? What if you were a um, a big time breaker, and you were sitting there with, um, I don't know, a couple dozen cases of flawless, right? Mm-hmm. And you knew that they were selling for fifty to a hundred percent more because champagne poppy was trying to find the triple logo man, right? Right. And you happen to have broken a case yourself and pulled the triple logo man, LeBron. Right? You have it. It wasn't on camera. You broke it in one of your own little, one of your own off-camera cases. What do you do? Well, I would would sell my cases before I would let people know that I have that card. Now, that is a great discussion about ethics, Right. Do I even have to disclose that I pulled that card? Nope. There's there's a ton of buyers that who want to remain anonymous, who don't want the scrutiny. And I'm reading this book called Long Term Capital Management, and they kept every single one of their trades secret. And it's it's interesting in a day and age where everyone now exposes what they're buying, right? There, I mean, these are gambles I'm making. I don't necessarily want the entire world to know what position or what side I'm on. Because as much as they could support it, they they know where my money's at, and they could go against me. True. The conventional wisdom of the day is that if you let people know what you have already purchased, uh, and they agree with your reasoning for it, they'll go buy it too. Thereby raising your raising the price of it and making your entry point already a winner, um, rather than automatically thinking people are going to go against you. Uh, there's a little psychology there, I guess. People, you think people are always against you, maybe. But the point the, the, this stands, was this right? was a book called When Genius Failed. Very interesting book. Very interesting book about how got, uh, a group of guys, scholars, it's called Long Term Capital Management, would have vig, where they would arbitrage, mm-hmm. where the spreads would get out of whack. So I don't know, maybe this is not the right comparison, where like Luca and Trey always trade three to one, and then Luca goes eight to one of Trey. They would buy Trey and short Luca. Mm-hmm. But they all did that with different brokers, so to keep each side of the position uh, c- kind of 
private. I get it. I guess what I'm saying is that this, you know, there's different layers to this, right? The, you know, the show bidding, that's definitely wrong, right? If you're going to bid on something with no intention of purchasing it just for the sake of establishing fake comps, you should be thrown off eBay. You should be, you know, pre- prevented from bidding. You know, that just, Why do you think it hasn't been stopped on eBay yet? You know what? I don't know. I don't know if it's, you know, Domo Origato, Mr. Roboto, and these guys are just with eBay. You're able to make as many, um, you know, accounts, different accounts, VPNs, you name it as you want. You know, you have a million people bid on these things, and every time something gets relisted, it just gets shilled again. I don't, I don't know what the right answer to that is. Um, I know it's something that people have, you know, been trying to deal with for a long time. I guess it's why higher end cards will go to an auction house, and why auction houses have vetting procedures. You know, PWCC had that whole, you know, we're going to pre qualify you for premier auction bidding. Like the, it's like almost like a know your client without kind of like a know your client, you know. Um, I know eBay doesn't have that. You can sign up for eBay with a, you know, with an unknown, you know, I am Johnny Dickhead at gmail.com email address. You don't even have have that money. Right. And you don't even have, do you have to even have the money in your debit account to bid the amount you have? Nope. You just, I mean, you can look at PayPal. You can look at PayPal that has zero dollars in it. You know, they don't know. They don't know if your PayPal has a balance, you know, if you link in a credit card to it or whatever. No. No, the the only punishment is, I guess, after you do it a couple of times, they can boot you, boot your account, you know, limit your account for bidding and that kind of stuff. So, it's um, it's interesting. Um, I don't what know. Else you got? Well, so you got, oh, we were heading down the basketball, you know. So, so my 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 question to you, we can take the eight one out of the equation because I happen to think that if the Hawks when they give the Heat a series, I do. I think I think part of what you were saying was momentum. Right, part of what you're saying was the Cavs' momentum, they don't have any. They're, they're moving in the wrong direction, and the Hawks are yeah. moving in the right direction right now. And I think that as part of what happened last year with the playoffs with the Hawks, they kind of got hot at the right time. Um, and the, the Hawks game, the Hawks team, Trey, they are the kind of team that if he gets hot, if the team gets hot, they can run with anyone, really, which you saw you know, in last year's playoffs. Um, the Heat play much better team basketball, and over a longer series, you'd expect the Heat to win. They're a very good defensive team. Yeah, but and defense is something that doesn't just go away in the playoffs. Yeah, you know, like they they, they really found something. PJ Tucker is such an underappreciated player. I got to tell you, my overarching topic really is the parity in sports, and I wonder if it's because people are being smarter about contracts, people are being smarter about how they build their teams up. But you know, I look at baseball, you know, a week in. And I see it's about as open as can be. You know, I said Tampa Bay when everybody was saying Toronto and the American League East. I said there's four playoff teams in there. And, you know, if you look at it, the Sox, you know, don't look so great. But, um, you know, it, it, it is wide open. Like I, I could see, you know, any one of a dozen teams winning the World Series this year in baseball. And you really don't get that. Same thing with basketball, right? Same thing. Like right now, I want to tell you, let's do a yes or no. Uh, my question is this, and I'm going to fill the blank in for you. You ready? The question is, if blank won the NBA championship this year, would you be shocked? You ready? If the Suns won the NBA championship this year, would you be, so- would you be shocked? Well, this is a tough one to start with. <clears throat> Shut up. <laughs> well, it the would be shocked. No. You be every shocked single guy the on Suns? The, every single guy on that team, it's their first championship. That's very rare, Cage. I guess Javel, Javel, Javel. All right, I'm going to stop this topic because if the Suns are a hard one for you, it should, it, yes, it would be the first championship, but would it be shocking? Be, They're the best team in the league. They had the best record, but remember the Bucks had the best record uh, during the bubble year, right. and then they lost in the first round to the Heat. Yes, and so it would be, Heat, you'd be shocked then if they lost in the first round. Shocked. I'm, I'm asking in this way, muy difícil. I mean, you know, I, I'm not yeah. trying to be difficult. Cage. Oh me. Oh. But, anyway, but, I get it. Yeah. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. The point I was trying to make, and now I'll just fast forward, is that I should be able to, with any normal human being, name a half dozen or ten NBA teams right now, and you'd be like, yeah, they could win. They're going to win the that wouldn't shock me. I'd be surprised, maybe. You know, I don't think they're going to win. You know, I can name another couple of teams I think are ahead of them. But the Suns winning, you legit might be the only person who watches the games who would be shocked. Can I actually Suns winning a championship. give a little yes, credit please. to LeBron? I think that's because one of the conferences had always had to run through LeBron. 
But so you always had, I know one team is going to be in the finals. And then there was three other teams that might make it out of the other conference, right? But now that LeBron and his team aren't in it, it's it does open it up. There is more parity. Yes. So we are giving credit and thanking LeBron for sucking. Is that right? Thank you. Age, age, age matters, man. He got he. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, thank you for sucking this year. LeBron. It opened <laughs> up. It opened up the field on both conferences. I've said it a million times. It's part of the reason Khabib retired. Because if he didn't, eventually he'd lose, and then he wouldn't. Retire I think this is the it. season. This is the playoffs. Uh, Giannis gets the crown. That's when he needs to prove that he is the new king of the NBA. So you are right now. All things being equal, you think it's the Bucks. I do. I do. Even though they pushed out and showed their true colors by tanking and ducking the Nets in a first round playoff series. You think that that's the team to beat. They just showed you what they were all about right there, that they were they were afraid of road nets. Are you asking if I like that strategy? No, no, I'm, I'm wondering as a fan, whether. Fan, no, as a player on that team, I want to win the championship, man. I don't want to beat the nets. My goal is not to beat the nets. It's to win the championship. So you're, you just want somebody else to beat them? I think they're still going to beat the nets. But I don't want to meet the nets in the first round. I want to meet them in the conference finals. Yeah, when they're a little more tired, a little older. I get it. I get it. I get it. Is there a guy who's changed his rep more than Kyrie? Kyrie went from hated. I think now he's actually very loved and respected. No way. By you. No, by the internet. He's like now prophetic. He's learned a lot. You see his quotes and his interviews coming out. Uh, He's playing incredibly well. No. He hasn't had an issue. I think Kyrie's changed the page. I think he's changed the page. Turned the page. Kyrie will look. Kyrie's already won a championship, and I people think he's still very hate him. I don't think so. I think that tide is changing. All right, I just take a look at his 2012 flawless man. First year flawless Kyrie rookie. But we Kyrie's talked about go that. Down. Kyrie's we... going to go down as a top 50 player of all time. Probably top 25. Kyrie, top 25 player of all time. He's <laughs> he's smooth. He's, he's got great he's... handles. He's great with the ball. He's flashy. He's top Tracy 25 McGrady, player. Tracy McGrady with a championship. Tracy McGrady is nowhere near a top 25 player of all time. Correct. But you could say Tracy McGrady's top 75? Mm, yeah, maybe. I mean, right you know, he, injuries kind of helped, kind of kind of hurt him. If he would have been able to play his whole career, it would have been a definite yes. People love McGrady, though. Kyrie, I think <laughs> Kyrie, Kyrie thinks the earth is flat. I mean, you know, I mean, Kyrie legit thinks the earth is flat. You know, he won a lot of fans over with his um, stance on not getting the vaccine. I get that, and you know, I mean, I got a Bed Stuy Kyrie jersey about ten feet away from me that is a an adult medium, uh, not a youth medium. So my son's got to grow into it a little bit. You know, it was purchased for him. He, but... he grows like a foot a day. <laughs> but uh, but. I mean, we love Uncle Drew. We love the movie. We've always been Kyrie fans here. But um, to say he's a top 25 all-time NBA player, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that's tough. Maybe by when it's all said and done, maybe wins a couple championships and you name it. Um, I think the difficult thing for him is going to be, you know, he won a he's championship. He's very unique also. In his, in, sorry, let me make it. No, you know, you're, he is very unique, right? So, But I think the problem you're going to have with someone like him is, do you think Scottie Pippen's a top 25 player of all time? That's where it gets interesting. Someone who's maybe like covers all the stats and maybe has the duration of a career. And no, I don't. I think Scottie Pippen's very overrated. I, very right. overrated. So he'll fall into the same category because, you know, when it's all said and done, Kevin Durant will likely be considered a top 10 NBA player of all time, top 15 NBA player of all time. He's got the championship. He's got the numbers. He will quickly move into the top 10 all-time scoring um, you know, if he's out there already, you know, passing Carmelo and then moving up the ranks as that happens. Um, who's, the, who's the number? Who's the better player on that team, Kyrie or Durant? But right now it's Durant's team. For for whatever you want to say, I mean, Kyrie didn't play. You know what I mean? So if they win a championship the year this year, he's the B, Ky- and and Durant's the A. And if they want, if he won a championship with LeBron, Kyrie was the B, and you know LeBron's the A. It's very difficult if you go through now. Um, you know, the top 25 players and in, in whatever iteration you want to go through, every one of them is going to be a, a, most likely a championship winner who was the A on their team. And if they didn't win a championship, it's difficult to put him in the top 25. And even if you do, it's because he was the alpha on that team. 
I mean, you're talking about obviously the you know the Bill Russells, the the Will Chamberlains, the Michael Jordan, the the LeBrons, you know, the Tim Duncans, the Shaq, Elgin Baylor, Kareem, and Magic all won championship together, right? That was one team. Uh, or no, no. Do you remember those Lakers teams that had two? A's? I don't think like Baylor was Jerry. Playing. Jerry Baylor West. wasn't playing anymore, but like West and Baylor played around the same time. I mean, those guys were playing in the '60s. Uh, Magic didn't come. Let me like phrase the late my seventies, right. early eighties. Go ahead. We in my lifetime, I've never seen it, a B look like Kyrie. I guess is what I'm saying. Either. Well, I mean, I mean, a perfect example I always give is like Pippen, right? Who was the top fifty player of all time, and he's a B, right? He was a B yeah. to Jordan, but you're you're. It's because the A. Kyrie's awesome, but think of the A's on his team. They're two top. T- he's he's been paired up on his championship runs, assuming he wins a championship with the Nets. With with top ten of all time A's, right? That's a I very agree. difficult comparison, you know. But, but you know, we've never seen one that that plays like him though. Pippen was like, like a, a defensive Kevin, guard. He yes, I understand what you're saying. Trust me, I, I get it with the handles and the whole deal. Um, the thing is, without LeBron and without um, Durant, and without Durant, has Kyrie ever been an A on a team that actually did anything? Like when 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 LeBron left. Him on the Cavs was not not too great, right? And then he kind him of on this Celtics team, was right? Not the that Celtics great. team, not that, and he wasn't the alpha on the Celtics team either. You know what I mean? So that's a knock on him. I love Kyrie. I mean, I I can watch Uncle Drew fifty times, right? And I love his game. I think it's smooth. I love his recent quotes, and I get what you're saying. You know, maybe the tide has changed because I'm seeing more motivational quotes. Don't worry about what people say, blah blah blah. Instead of hey, the world is flat. And I'm an idiot, right? It's different stuff that's being pushed out there. The narrative is different on him. Um, but when it comes down to, you know, overall legacy, you know, the Celtics won. Robert Parrish is a great player. Kevin McHale is an all-time great player, top 75. But those Celtics teams were Larry Bird's teams. You know what I mean? Um, so that's the that's the deal. Yes, James Worthy was a fantastic player. He was on the North Carolina team with Michael Jordan that won the national championship. He won on the Showtime Lakers, right? Kareem was at the tail end of his career, but those were Magic Johnson's teams, right? James Worthy is time. probably the best comp, and even now we don't talk about Iverson that much either. Yeah, but Iverson was always a clear-cut one on his team. Yeah. Always. I mean, it was his I team. I would still give the nod to Iverson in that comparison. He didn't win that you know championship either. I mean, I know he got close. Um but I, I mean, know. handles and flash, also kind of an outgoing, different personality, different from the bunch. I mean, could you say Marbury, Stefan? But Starberry, I got a pair of Starberries once. You know, could you say Marbury as a comparison? Flash, you know, skills. Stevie you know, little... Franchise. Steve Francis, that's another good one. Yeah, I mean, the, the you know, I'm trying to think of like guard type of play, you know, to, you know, to compare the game to the flashy game, um, you know, who were sort of ones on their team, right? Um, I mean, we'll see. Listen, I, I I can't wait for it. I can't wait for the NBA playoffs. I think it's going to be great. I think this is going to be a real wide open playoffs. And where I was going with it is. I wouldn't be surprised if the Celtics won a championship. I wouldn't be surprised if the Bucks won a championship. I wouldn't be surprised if the Heat won a championship. I wouldn't be surprised if the Nets won a championship. You know what I mean? That's four you started teams. with the Suns though for me. Yeah, I would, and th- I that would was be I picked the team with the most wins, and that I it stopped there. So I'm not asking you anymore. I'm telling no, you. No, ask, ask, ask me. Ask me. Ask me. No, ask we're, ask you, it's not happening. We're not. We're done. We're moving along. Time. I'm like we're, a fine wine. <laughs> we'll move along. I think the audience, I think Luka Nation gets the point that with parody, we could see some, you know, some interesting stuff happen here. Like, I don't expect it to be the Suns against the Heat just because they were the, both of the one seeds. I don't think that happens. But if it does, all right, they were the one seeds. You know, that's chalk right there. You know, like, it, it wouldn't be shocking. I wouldn't be shocked if the twos. I wouldn't be shocked if threes. You know, I I mean, would you be would you be shocked if 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 Luca carries Dallas to uh, the the finals? No. Would you be shocked if Ja yes. and that crazy team takes the Grizzlies? No. Any of those teams yes. could catch fire. Any of them, just like the Hawks, may, almost made it last year. None of these teams I, I, are so Sons far head and shoulders. Are my t- Sons and Warriors are my two picks out of the West, and Bucks. I mean, I, you can't count out the Nets. I'm not going to be an idiot, but. Bucks, Nets, Heat are potentials that come out of the East if we're doing that exercise. The Celtics. No. You don't think the Celtics have a shot? The number two seed. 
What's what's their um, competitive advantage? Like, if we just talk about from a business standpoint, what what do they do better than other teams that they match up with? Well, first we, we'll see who they match up with, but athleticism and Jason Tatum. This is the year. This is the year he's supposed to take that step up. He's the superstar. I heard this really awesome podcast host talk about Jason Tatum many, many times about this is the year. He's He looks different on the court. He's the alpha. It's his team. He's going to show up. He dropped 50. Gia? He's a superstar. You! This is you! Yeah, man. Not, not in this the context the- of the... Co- comparison that you're making right now the comparison that he that that it, it wouldn't be a shock if this budding superstar who can drop 50 a game took his team to the finals that shouldn't no, be a shock it would be, be, be a shock it would be a shock oh my god you here's are why so, here's it's why like beating my head against the wall dude here's why the heat the heat clear cut they they they, they, they their defense is what they ride on and then their offense comes and goes they could get hot but they're not, they're not a overpowering offensive team, but their defense far none the best in the league. Celtics have an above average defense and above average offense. But at the end of the day, they still have to meet a team like Brooklyn, who I'm interested to see how that series goes. I think Brooklyn gets out of it, Cage. So do I. I but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked if the Celtics got out of it. But they're two seed. They should beat the seven seed. I don't even think I framed it in a way. I framed it in a fun way. But you, but look, the three seed, the Bucks, who you think are going to win it all, right? You said strategically, it's probably smart to not meet the Nets in the first round, right? Which means you wouldn't be shocked if the Nets beat the Bucks if they met in the first round, even though they're a three seed. And who you think is going to beat them? Any of these teams have two superstars who could go off for forty-five both. Yeah, but so do Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum could both go off for forty-five any given night. Not in the playoffs. Not in the playoffs. Why not? Well, they they could do it against the Bucks. Uh, Not the Bucks. The the Nets. Yeah, because there's no defense. There's no defense. Yeah, but they're they're not going to both go off against the. But that's why it shouldn't. But that's why it shouldn't shock you if the Celtics win. They could do that against the Bucks. But (laughs) (laughs) remember this thing. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, but I understand. What you, I actually enjoy this. I actually think this is, this is this is fun because I mean I'm trying to phrase it in a way like, okay, like I know the odds are against it, right? I'm not What's saying it's going to happen, right? I know I the know odds are against odds. it happening, but but it shouldn't shock you. You know what I mean? Like I, I get it. If you tell me that the Spurs are going to win the championship, that would shock me because they were just eliminated. You know what I mean? Like maybe the Pelicans would shock me. You know what I mean? Like, like I mean, I guess Zion could actually play and just dominate everybody. Sure, but it would the it Celtics would be shocking. Have yeah. better odds to win a championship than the Heat. Yes, does that shock you? No, because of the parity. It's because exactly what I'm. T- nothing in this shocks me. I'm telling you, 10, 12 teams. You could tell me right now, this team wins a championship. I wouldn't be shocked. I would. I would bet money on it. It wouldn't be something I expect to happen, but it wouldn't knock me out of my chair if Dallas or Memphis went on a run. No, it wouldn't because they're, these teams are so damn close. The, There's nothing the great. There's nothing that sets them, you know, that would shock me. The Timberwolves making the finals would shock me. That's one of a few that are in the playoffs that I would say would shock me. Yes. Like that's that's gonna shock me. You know? A series to watch that's really interesting because I love this Grizz team. I've talked about them a lot this year, yeah. but they match up. The Timberwolves match up really well against the the Grizz, and I'm gonna watch that series. I'm interested to see how that one plays out. Because here's the thing with the, with the Grizz, a lot of their competitive advantage. I guess I'm gonna stick with that word is their hustle. Their intensity, their trash talk, all that stuff. I mean, Pat Bev looked like he won a championship after he won that game. They're not a great shooting team by any means. Desmond Bain aside, who almost led the league in three-point shooting. Shout out to you, Cage. You were on that early. Shame there wasn't any cards of his to buy. Uh, they're not a great shooting team. They really aren't. No, so it's going to be you. interesting. Oh, listen, and his athleticism. And, you know, as far as shocking goes, look – Obviously, it wouldn't shock Patrick Beverly if they made it to the finals. The way they were celebrating, it looked like they had already won the finals. Who has more experience out of those two teams? Yeah, I mean, 100% right. 100% right. I mean, the players on it, they, they 100% do. Listen. I could see this being a Tim, Timberwolves upset 
I'd be if it's a Timberwolves upset, there might be a bloodbath for John Moran cards. But uh, <laughs> I could see this being six, seven games. I mean, th- we'll get the matchups, but think of the matchup narratives, right? You got Kyrie going back to Boston, Love it. right? I'm shipping up to Boston, right? You got you got Ja against what many people are thinking. Many people are thinking is the Ja next year, Anthony Edwards, right? And what if Edwards? It, it, what if he fast forwards that timetable, and what if he beats Ja in the playoffs? Do his cards catch Lamelo? Do Ja's cards take a little bit of a dip? And what you're telling me is, it wouldn't shock you if it happened based on the matchup. And I love that. I love it. I don't love the hoodie, but I love Why it. Not? I love you. I because you know people call hoodie you Mello. We're you talking about the NBA. When you wear hoodies, people just they come out. They come after you, man. They just focus. People, this is this I know. Is the NBA playoffs. This is Eye where... of the Tiger. This is Eye of the Tiger. I guess it. NBA playoff time. This is matchups are set. Raptors yet, Sixers. Yeah. We, it's funny, man. As a Philly guy, I really don't talk about my Sixers very much at all, do I? Nope. Nope. No, but you got the Eye of the Tiger. That's the Philly in you right now. And I could eat a cheesesteak right now. So we got a lot of Philly stuff going on on this episode. Um, I'll tell you guys, if you're ever in Philly. Uh, yeah, there's like the the cheesesteak places that you know. <laughs> Stockyard. Everything is made from scratch. Farm to table beef. The best F-T-T, cheesesteak. FTT, baby. Best cheesesteak in Philly. Stockyard on Spring Garden. I got it again being home yesterday. My favorite. Favorite, favorite. And it's like a small mom and pop shop. All right, so that's basketball. We'll put a little we, – we can, you know, maybe this weekend, maybe tomorrow, once we know the 1-8, maybe we can do like a matchup analysis or maybe, you know, early next week or something like that. We'll do kind of like a what we think is going to happen and – you know, do some stuff there. Um, you know, like a little playoff, a little playoff fun. Maybe do a bracket even. Who the hell knows? We'll figure something out. But that's that's a fun one to chat about. Um, a lot of fun auctions ending this week. We got Andrew moving down to Florida. Captain, right, driving. Cap, cap, yeah, he's driving down. He's gonna be driving. He's gonna be driving, driving all the way down. Are you drinking like Mountain Dew and like you know just driving through the night? Life is a highway. Andrew's gonna drive do, it. Oh, I just nice. finished week four of 75 hard, so I'm gonna have to do two workouts on the road. Uh, that's gonna be fun. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna figure it out. Uh, just no, I'm not sure. I don't drink, pull over, you know go to the bathroom, you know, do some push ups by the by, you know, by the rest station. I brought be my careful. kettlebell. Don't, yeah, oh, well, that sounds fantastic. You make hot water in that, and then <laughs> it rings when it's done. So, like, kettlebell, it like lets you know when the tea is ready. It's good stuff. Co- man. Coffee and water are my drink. Coffee, tea, and water. Coffee, tea, and water. Not me. No, but it's, I, it's I, I might stop at a hobby water. shop. Maybe in like Atlanta, in uh, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. It'll be like Sunday morning when I get through there. I'm gonna see if there's a hobby shop to stop by. Stop it south of the border. Get some fireworks. Do a little gambling. Come on, dude. What the? You can't miss south of the border. What is that? You can't. You'll see. Yeah, you'll, you'll see. You'll see for like 100 miles. You'll see what's out there. Just billboards? <laughs> so it wasn't casinos for a while. There it was just like a bunch of stores and you know, like all kinds of crazy stuff basically on the Carolina border. So once you get North Carolina, South Carolina, south of the border, you said, yeah, you're going to start to see signs the whole drive. 100 miles to south of the border, 90 miles. Then, the, then it's just like, stop it south of the border. So you'll see. It's fun stuff. And they added some casinos and stuff over there too. So you know, I mean, look, you can put some pennies in. You put some penny slots, some little pennies. In. Boom, Is that boom, like boom. Reno in Vegas? Like how when you leave California, there's all the casinos and there's like signs as you go through. Actually, there's casinos in Tahoe too. Actually, now I think about it, casinos everywhere now. It's gonna be casinos in sports stadiums. It's gonna be insane. Are you worried man. about that? What casinos and stadiums? Yeah. No, no. Um, I have turning really, America to degens. I haven't really sports bet in a while. Um. And look, we're listen. We're all betters one way or another. Whether it's with sports cards or the stock market or any of these things, everybody's placing a bet on something. So, you know, NFTs is another DGen example. It's all the same stuff. It all comes from the same blood, you know. And um, you know, we all we're all we're all you know we're all risk takers. But it's so here. It's funny. Like when things go legal, right? Like weeds become legal. Gambling's become legal. First, they have to set up the system so that the the people that they want are the ones that profit, right? System for eating pancakes. 
You love systems. But you're right. It is. I mean, listen, you legalize it. It's got to be the government has to take their share. The government has to take their piece. It's got to be legal. So in these, is it not just the government? Like, yeah, I mean, their they're share, it's like, well, know. no. I mean, for gambling, for weed, it's different. But for gambling, it's private casinos. But, uh, you know, they're licensed. There's gambling boards. And, you know, there's share. A lottery is a great example, right? I mean, that's basically state run gambling, little scratch off tickets and whatnot. Um, you know, so it's interesting stuff. We got a whatnot show to do in, uh, in shortly. So what are we going to wrap up with? We, I love this basketball analysis. I love back and forth. I love beating my head against the wall trying to get through to you. But I think the point is made that you could ask six people and you might get three or four different, you know, people will tell you what kind of, who's going to win a championship. Um, MVP. It's Jokic, right? I think yeah. so. So that would be – I'd be shocked if anybody else won it. I like Embiid, but I think Jokic, you know, really put some distance. Um, Very other... interesting MVP race if you kind of look at it. Oh, yeah. All three guys have a case. Yeah. I'm interested but... to see if Luca comes back too. He's got a calf injury. Wrap with anything. Um, let me get my um... – I want to see Luca do well. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it, we've now seen him enough – where you know people are expecting stuff out of him finally in the playoffs. It was like, oh, he doesn't have to make the playoffs, then he just make the playoffs. Now you kind of want to see him actually like, you know, do something, win a playoff series, something like that. Half you know? injury's tough, Cage. It that's is not an easy that's not an easy injury to come back from. That's like I mean, that's your first step, right? Yep. Yeah. And he and he takes like four steps, like Giannis. Like every time he goes to the basket, they they take four steps, five steps after they pick up. I'll dribble, ask you a so. quick five minute question. Shoot, it's it touches on a few different topics, but it's all under. Why so, yes, does the hobby? I am an investor and a collector. And I why does okay. the hobby get okay. so much grace to PSA and that whole organization? Oh my because god, that's a whole what? episode. That's not five minutes. I will go on an hour long rant about PSA for you guys very soon. They they get really a lot of slack. Like people. I mean, this Mark's case is one thing. They've had scandals in the past that people completely forget. But then, like, the their people have cards there for 12 to 18 months now that people have paid for. How is that not, like, how is that not theft? Well, uh, it's not theft. And them holding on to cards at certain service levels for as long as they have the, be- the best correlation that I can give, uh, the best comparison is uh, redemption cards. Uh, when you buy a product and you put a redemption card in, you know, the language that's on there, just like when you submit a card is, you know, they're making their best efforts to get it back to you within a specific time frame. Nothing's guaranteed. You know, they can't be held to, you know, anything if, if um, you know, if the card doesn't come back in the, the suggested time frame. You know what I mean? Um, it's almost like a suggested retail price on a box of cards. Nobody sells it for that, do they? No. So, and if you sue, you have to prove that they didn't. No, but there's nothing to sue for. Yeah, that's <laughs> if you were going to try to be a claimant or a plaintiff, you'd have to say, you'd have to say that they had, you know, they they breached some sort of a duty to you or some sort of an obligation to you, and they would say that their only obligation was to get it back to you within uh, what would, would amount to a reasonable time or whatever the language is. On their page, which I haven't even looked at, but I can tell you, there's nothing. There's nothing actionable. So you know, my they, take on this, is- they were inundated, you know, and I get it. But eventually, get it back. Optics is where it goes. Is where it goes south. Optics, Optics. is good. So, just remember the when people criticize whoever it is, a person, an influencer, a company, whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever people criticize on this day. More than likely, it's where their money is. And I think the reason why PSA has so much grace is because everyone's holding PSA bags. Well, listen, you're coming after PSA right now, and we are sponsored by SGC. So are you going after PSA because your money is with SGC? No, I don't think so. Fair to ask, right? I don't think so. Okay. And I've said that I don't really have any loyalty to any of these grading companies. So, yeah, we get their money. They get our customers. Um, we give our customers 
50 free grading submissions every month. I don't know anyone else who does that. Um, but no, I don't. I would come after SGC just the same way, even if we were sponsored by them. If what they said they were going to do and what they actually did had a disconnect, right? Like to me, that's that's where it goes really off the charts. And I, I don't really like that they flaunt, like that they turn cards around so fast and all that stuff where we personally know people that are sitting on cards from 2020. That doesn't feel right. Uh, and that doesn't feel ethical to me. And I'm curious. I don't know. Listen, nothing you're saying is wrong. I only bring up the SGC because, listen, we are sponsored by SGC. But at this point in time, every order that we've sent into SGC has come back in a matter of weeks. Uh, if that stops, we will have an issue with that, the same way you have an issue right now with PSA. Um, I don't foresee it stopping anytime soon. Um, and... Let's take a second, actually, to roll off of PSA onto SGC. You had a, a, a great post. SGC with over 100,000 cards graded, you know, setting records again. Um, you know, let's let, take a second to, you know, let people know we did speak recently to Peter. And they are taking in a record number of cards. They take in more cards per day this week than they had taken in ever before in the company's history. But even with that, um, they're still turning the cards around in not just the time promised, but in less than that amount of time uh, because they know the cards are coming in. They see that secondary sales are robust for their cards. And when the secondary sales, you know, happen, um, you know, more people are going to send stuff in. So they're increasing capacity at the same time as they're getting more cards in. So just a little quick, you know, I hope I'm not, you know, saying anything outside of school, but we do get to speak to him. And I'm sure that he would want that kind of stuff out there for folks. Um, and if he told us anything else, we'd make sure to tell you that too. Um, something that I'm, I'm, I'm be kind of interested in fun, grade the grader. So something that concerns me, right. Is when PSA got all that backlog. Mm -hmm. So their lead grader, super revered, super yep. respected though. But I'm worried about like the, the graders that they're hiring, right. Like kind of grade the grader. I would put up SGC is grader because they've been ready for this rush versus PSA's graders at this point, uh, especially for the zero, you know, 50 to a thousand dollar cards, which probably hit the junior graders level, junior levels uh, desk. Well, we apologize to everybody who has uh, group subs with us because you're now all getting fives and sixes after this last 10 minutes, but it is what it is. At least you'll get them back. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. <laughs> you get fives and sixes for you all. Sorry. Um, and I hope to get those stuff back for you guys soon. I really do. Uh, for those of you guys listening who sent us cards in December of 2020 and haven't got your cards back, you know, we apologize profusely. You know, we are in the same boat. We have, you know, cards in those group subs, our own cards, our friends' cards, uh, family's cards. Dude, Cage has this fun game that he plays. Anytime we have a group sub, I think he's competitive. He's like, I could sub as much as all of our people combined. <laughs> I'm like, you don't have to do that, man. Like, you don't have to just throw cards in the sub. I'm, I'm going to get us. I'm going to get us more. I'm going to get us more. That's it. That's just, here we go. I'm just subbing more cards. I have more cards. The basement. Coach Tyler, he's subbing with us. Say no more. Say, say no more. I, I can see send yes. my cards. That's it. <laughs> send me the boxes. Send me, send me some cards. Listen, guys, we love you. Uh, can't wait to go through the basketball playoffs with you. Love to hear from you which team you'd be shocked if they won. Um Pistons. Baseball, baseball ramping it up. The Pistons. <laughs> we got draft coming, right? The football draft, NFL draft. I have to tell you guys, I love that we get to do this. Sports are an amazing thing. They give us something to talk about almost every single day. And when they don't, Andrew wears a hoodie, and I get to talk about that. Wow. <laughs> love you, Luke Nation. <laughs> Can we turn? I like where you're going. We might turn this into a sports podcast and go bigger. I mean, why the hell not, man? Sports are amazing. And, you know, we do talk about the cards that stem from those sports. But if we do that, I'm going to have to learn F1 a little bit better. So that's that's the only thing I'm going to have to say. I believe I'll have to learn a little bit of soccer. Uh, you know, we'll have to really expand it. Pickleball. We get some amazing guests now, man. We could okay. – um, I, th I think we could uh, start attracting some awesome talent. There we go. We got to bounce, right? Yep. Thanks, everybody. Peace. Peace.